Okay, I'll say it. I think high realism in games is a bit played out, if I'm being honest. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it's incredible that we can make realistic-looking games, and that's nothing to sneeze at. But when I see a game with a realistic-looking style, I can't help but bunch it in with the hundreds of other games that look just like it. This really disappoints me when I feel like a game could have been enhanced tonally or mechanically by a different art style. Take Skyrim, for instance. It has a high-realism art style to match its serious tone, but it takes place in a suspiciously Scandinavian country on a whole different planet that's actually just the dream of a dragon god. Yeah, Skyrim is weird. Knowing that, doesn't it feel like a high-realistic art style just kind of takes the magic out of it all? Skyrim also highlights the problem that realistic graphics age really quickly, and compared to current games with realistic art styles, I'm gonna say this doesn't quite hold up. And let's not forget the real is brown trope that Skyrim falls into. I kinda hate this, especially from a game design perspective. Everything just blends into this grey-brown soup, making it harder to see enemies and easier to miss important items or gameplay elements. Skyrim is supposed to be this magical, wonderful world, but it looks like a muddy puddle. Remember, this is all taking place on a planet full of gravelly-voiced catboys in some space dragon's dream. And then we have Marvel's Spider-Man. The fact that this game is made in a realistic art style just feels like one big missed opportunity, especially when you compare it to Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, the animated film that came out just a few months later. Spider-Verse utilizes stylization as homage, and to enhance the story of the film, while Marvel's Spider-Man doesn't. That said, I do appreciate the little details put into the game like the comic book spider suit, I just wish there was more of that. It feels like this video is becoming a bit too negative, so I wanted to quickly talk about a game that I think nails it with a realistic art style. The Last of Us Part II does a great job of developing a realistic art style that feels like it truly belongs in the game. Given we're talking about a horror game with a gritty tone and serious content, this feels pretty obvious, but the setting and lore in the game make this art style fit. The Last of Us Part II is set in an alternate history United States, and the infected are based on an actual fungal strain, Cordyceps, that zombifies ants. Unlike Skyrim, this game grounds itself in reality, and unlike Spider-Man, it doesn't have any baggage from source material. With that said, as much as I love stylization in games, it can also be played out a bit too much. Lots of stylized games utilize a pixel or low-poly art style, which admittedly makes sense and is not inherently bad, these art styles are historically intertwined with games, but this alone feels like a shallow reason to go with them. Much like with realism, these styles risk getting lost among the other similar looking games. Some studios, like Yacht Club games, have made specific types of pixel art their signature style. In Yacht Club's case, they take heavy inspiration from the limitations of the Game Boy, setting them apart from other studios that just go with generic or unfocused pixel art styles. One of the games that I think utilizes stylization best is Going Under. This game is about working in a tech startup as an unpaid intern. It's also a really funny critique of corporate hierarchies, culture, and capitalism. Going Under replicates an art style known as Corporate Memphis. It's that art style all those tech companies use in their marketing materials, and I'm going to go on a brief tangent to explain why. So Corporate Memphis is derived from the style of the Memphis Group. They were a group of Italian furniture designers in the 1980s who became famous for their use of bold, simple shapes and bright, garish colors. The reason why Corporate Memphis has been adapted by big tech companies is to appeal to the broadest audience possible. Characters in the Corporate Memphis art style are abstract, being composed of simple shapes and often unrealistic skin tones. This makes it easier for anyone to identify with these characters. Because they don't look like any one particular person, it's easier for a wider range of people to see themselves in these characters' shoes. Going Under combines this soft, inoffensive art style with crass, apathetic characters to comedically critique the way big tech companies brand themselves in juxtaposition to how they actually act. I love it. Sable has a comic book art style based on the work of the French illustrator Mobius. Much like Mobius's comics, Sable takes place in the desert. Vibrant shifting colors and clean line work encourage exploration by making things easier to see and luring the player to different locations with dazzling hues. Super Hot is a fast-paced FPS game with a simple but direct color language. Red means enemy, black means weapon, white means environment. This makes it easy for players to quickly familiarize themselves with their surroundings and get right into the game. Similarly, Neon White color codes enemies and even renders them in a different style from environments to make them stand out more. Both of these games are chocked full of fast-paced gameplay, so these artistic decisions don't just look cool, they serve as accessibility features. 
Cuphead is a shoot 'em up that utilizes the rubber hose style of early animation. This art style, combined with the ragtime and jazz soundtrack of the game, create an experience where the player feels they should never stand still. And they shouldn't. But, by utilizing an art style with roots in minstrel shows and racist caricature, Cuphead puts itself in some hot water. Now, I love stylization in games. I mean, I'm making a whole video on it. But it's important to understand the history of certain art styles and be prepared to grapple with that history if you choose to employ them. There's this great unwinnable article about Cuphead's art style that I really hope you take the time to read. I've linked it in the description. Essentially, Cuphead is rendered in this art style but tries to avoid engaging with the style's history. I say tries because while characters in the game are designed to look more abstract and less representational, Cuphead and Mugman are portrayed as gambling tricksters, a racist trope common in early cartoons depicting black people. It's important that we don't whitewash this art style and risk forgetting it and repeating its history. Anyways, what do you think? Can you think of any games that utilize a stylized art style to enhance gameplay tonally or mechanically? I'd love to hear about them in the comments. As always, I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe and like this video. It helps motivate me to make more stuff. If you're interested in seeing more of my work, check out my Twitter where I post my art and music. I actually just revamped my Twitter and made a new one, so follow that one instead of the old one that I posted in the last video. Anyways, thanks for watching!